Lauren Donaldson is the new head coach of Jamaica's Reggae Girls. Uh, the Jamaica Football Federation issued this statement earlier on Wednesday. The executive of the JFF has decided that Lauren Donaldson is the best person to lead the senior women's national team into the CONCACAF qualifiers, which start in Mexico on July 4. Quote here from Michael Ricketts, president of the JFF. We looked at all the dynamics involved, including the short period to prepare, and agreed that Lorne brings specific advantages to the position, including familiarity with regional football culture and knowledge of the players, and is well-placed to navigate the team through what will be a difficult qualifying exercise. Ricketts continued, the JFF will give all the necessary support to him and the team, and we are confident that they will make Jamaica proud in Mexico. His backroom staff will be named soon. Now, the reggae girls are preparing for the CONCACAF Women's Championship, uh, which kicks off in, well, on July 4 in Mexico. The Jamaicans are in Group A with the hosts, uh, Mexico, of course, USA and Haiti. This is Lorne Donaldson's second coaching stint with the team, having served previously as deputy to Hugh Menzies during the successful World Cup qualifying campaign in 2019. Uh, yeah, disappointment now. Well, for me, I just want to start by saying, you know, I have a genuine love for the Jamaica Reggae Girls and a vested interest in the fact that I want to see them do well. So the appointment of Lauren Donaldson, initially, I just wanted to know, you know, I started to do my research because I would not have been here in Jamaica when he coached, when he coached them in the first stint, right? Um, which was in when, 2019, under Hugh Menzies? But you were here. Yeah, I'm now working it yeah, out. We I had were, now joined. I had yeah, now joined yeah, in 2019. And we went to a Brazil host for the right, World Cup. Right, but then again, he wouldn't mm -hmm. have been the headline because right. when you're an assistant coach, you're in the back, mm -hmm. you know, behind the scenes. So the point I'm trying to make is um, initially I wasn't sure because you know how I felt about Coach Vin Blaine and just the, um, the results, the run of results that he would have had with the Jamaica Reggae Girls. But seeing that Lorne Donaldson is not a stranger to the team, um, I hope that he doesn't have the same experiences that Coach Ben Blaine has. And the fact that he's familiar with the setup because he would have been around the ladies. I'm just concerned about when is the next coaching camp and just to see him get the best of the ladies. Mm. Well, no matter how you look at this, it's a very, very untidy situation. Really, yeah. really untidy. Because given the time span that he now has to prepare the team for the CONCACAF July. World Cup qualifiers, it's undesirable. No matter how you look at it, this is an undesirable situation. Having said that, because of his familiarity with probably 80 or 90 percent of the girls, and uh, I, I somehow get the impression that a lot of them are comfortable with him, um, this may be the best of a bad situation that we can, we can arrive at. Lauren Donaldson's uh, experience is, is deep in football. I first knew him as the man guiding Colorado Foxes when Walter Boyd was in his pump, and so he's vastly experienced with coaching men and vast experience coaching women as a as an appointment at this time the 11th hour i think it's a good decision the jff would have made the thing though a lot of pressure is on these reggae girls because they asked for a change of coaching staff they've gotten a change of coaching staff it is that they must now go and deliver because failure will cause the wall of criticism to tumble down on their backs. It's yeah. so funny you say that, eh? but whenever things go wrong, it's usually the coach that they point things to. However, this coach will have a, a getaway card because he just got them. Well, he started mm -hmm. before a ball was kicked in this yeah. final round, so it's a good place to start from. It's just that with the mentality disruption and everything else, yeah. the girls have no excuses. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to say quickly too that um, when we had spoken to Vin Blaine, he did concede that he thinks that this is a better roster than the one that qualified for the 2019 World Cup. And I said to him at the time, you realize, Vin, that you're putting yourself under a lot of pressure yep. because if an inferior team qualified for the World Cup in 2019, it will be unforgivable mm -hmm. now for you as a coach um, to not qualify this team. And he accepted the pressure, yeah. but he said that's what, that's what coaching is all about. And um, there is pressure on this team because it's a tough group and qualifying yeah. won't be easy. Yeah, yeah, acid test, Mexico, US, Haiti. Yeah, very, very tough. Uh, continuing with football, Manchester United have confirmed that Paul Pogba and Jesse Lingard will leave the club when their contracts expire at the end of June. Pogba has spent six seasons at Old Trafford, scoring 29 goals and logging 38 assists in 157 appearances. PSG and Juventus are understood to be among the club's keen 
on signing the 29-year-old. Another man who's 29-year-old is Jesse Lingard, and he's reportedly in talks to join West Ham after impressing on loan for David Moyes' team in the 2020 21 season. Meanwhile, reports out of Spain say United are trying to sign Frankie de Jong for Barcelona, although the player did say on the weekend that he would rather stay with the Spanish Giants. He called Barca the club of his dreams and admitting that even though he's not gotten enough playing time, he still wants to fight for the right to wear the famous colors of the Catalan club. Brent Sancho is back in TNT and he joins us. Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone, Brent. Good afternoon, uh, George, and of course, Lance and and to all your viewers. Right. When will you accept, Brent, that Paul Pogba underwhelmed at Manchester United? Are you ready to accept that now? No, I, 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 I think I accepted that a little while now. Um, listen, I, I, I lamented today that at some point MTV is going to contact Manchester United to do a reality program because... I don't think a, a club could get it so wrong for such a long time. I'm just amazed at that the, the hierarchy at Manchester United makes so many bad decisions. I, I read a very funny tweet today that suggested they let Paul Pogba out, go for free, paid almost a hundred million for him to let him go for free again, and that kind of sums up what you get from Manchester United. And it's unfortunate because I think Pogba has all the talent in the world, but it was just. Uh, that you're trying to fit wrong pegs in square holes. Yeah. So how much of his, 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 his failure to spark consistently at Manchester United? Because, of course, there were phases of games and games where he looked like the best player in the world. How much of his failure to consistently deliver the goods was down to him and how much was down to what the club put together around him? I would say 70-30 to, to Manchester United. I think that I think the environment at the club was just not right. You look at the the, the, the managers that came in. Uh, of course, his relationship with Jose Mourinho or lack thereof of a relationship. Uh, and of course, if you look back at, at Paul Pogba's career, he's not consistently played in the same position. So I think a lot of that had to do with the turmoil that was at Manchester United. Look, there's no there's no doubt in my mind that he's a player. That has a lot of blame to take as well for for the way he carried about himself himself in Manchester United. You know, George, I always felt that he was supposed to be a leader coming into this club, but it, but when you listen to some of the the noise coming out of, of, of Old Trafford, he seemed to be a disruptor. And I think for for me personally, that was a big disappointment because I was really looking for him to go on and, and lead this squad, but he just never did it. Yeah, and your comments now on Jesse Lingard, who's been with the club for twenty years, and he only started two games. Last season, look, that's that's again, that's another confusing one. When West Ham was willing to actually pay money for him, they allowed to go to free to West Ham now. So, look, I think I think Jesse Lingard is another one that uh, suffered the faith, like many players in Manchester United, of the two more that's in the dressing room. I think a lot of the viewers need to understand that once a, a dressing room, a changing room where the players change and, and discuss and talk, it has two more as fist fights. Uh, and, and it's just a very toxic environment. There's, there's, there's no chance that not only the club's going to do well, but the individual players within that club is going to do well because it, it, it's, it's just not the environment for them to produce. It, it's, I don't think in, 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 in my time in the sport, I've ever heard of a toxic dressing room winning trophies, and Manchester United is a toxic dressing room. Yeah. Last one before we go, quickly. Why would... Well, what has convinced Manchester United that Frankie de Jong can survive and thrive in the Premier League? Because I don't know I don't know the answer to that. I, I Listen, I, I, I would turn to my left and look at Van der Beek and, and that would be my answer right there. And look, I, I, and again, it goes back to the hierarchy. And what are they thinking? It, it's He's a player that's struggling at Barcelona uh, for time. He, he, he obviously... It's not the type of player I personally think is going to do well in the Premiership because he needs time and space on the ball and the Premiership is not that. Uh, and then you're bringing him in and I would su su suspect to be the, f the, the focal point of the, the rebuild of Manchester United. Again, I think it's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. One more on the Pogba issue. PSG, home. Juve, home in many respects. It was the making of Pogba. Uh, if you're him and you're advising him, what would you suggest? 
I, I think PSG is another toxic uh, situation. So I, I would stay far there. And, and I think he needs somewhere where he can just focus in. And, and we've seen Pogba as well. He's won a World Cup. We've seen him doing great stuff for France. I think Juventus is a much more settled situation for Paul Pogba, where he could just simmer down and focus on his football. And of course, let his football do the, do the talk. Hear you on that. So the Juventus fan wants Pogba to go back to Juventus. Uh, you're a shameless, no Brin Sanjay. You're a shameless. No, no problem at all. <laughs> all right, my friend. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. All right. Zone up late two after this break with Mariah, who's going to pop it into the oven. Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment. <laughs>